There are a lot of things to like about x86 devices, but I was just watching another YouTuber's video this morning, Kai Retro Gaming. He was talking about the new MSI Claw and how the Wi-Fi chip is set in power saving mode by default and you now have to do something to fix it. So these x86 devices are great, but you know, when you spend, okay, this iNeo is very expensive, like $700 on a device, do you, Unless you are a tinkerer and you enjoy that sort of thing, you don't want to be spending hours and hours fixing drivers and making things work that should have worked in the first place. And that's where Bazite comes in. So installation was pretty easy. In this instant, I actually just removed the SSD. I ordered a two terabyte from Banggood and installed Bazite's um, just a clean installation bazaar. So there's no windows on you at all. Um, I don't know if that was a good idea. Anyway, so you set up a flash drive. Uh, you put the flash drive in, you boot from the flash drive. Um, you might need a physical keyboard and a mouse. Um, I managed to use, some of these keys are mapped to physical keys and I managed to get away with just using these keys. Um, you boot from the flash drive, you install bazaar. There's a few little setup quirks uh, for instance, there's a certain selection, I'll put it on the screen, of you mustn't select that thing or you're definitely going to need a physical keyboard and you're really going to struggle with the installation. And then you're pretty much in. So I mostly just want to talk about Bazites and what it's been like using it. Um, and it, yeah, the installation was pretty easy. And then talking about all this custom firmware makes me think of my RGB20SX. Um, I'm doing it with PCBWay. Um, I'm busy developing a custom backplate. Um, they're gonna be painting it for me. I found the matching Pantone color for this. Using their system, their websites, and doing the ordering system was pretty damn easy. You send in your files, so I got a 3D file from an online friend, and uh, I sent it to them. I loaded it onto the website sent it in for review. They then review the project and then they say, cool, it's approved, you go pay, and then off you go. You send it off and you get it done. Um, they do custom PCBs, they do CNC milling. You can do big projects and get some plastic injection molding done. And if you don't know what to do, if you're just the sort of person that's like, wow, that is actually pretty cool, maybe I should do something, go onto their shared projects page. It's a whole little community where people have shared a lot of things, including gaming mods, like little circuitry mods for their consoles, like a PS1, maybe the plug or something is broken and they've actually modified it um, to make it work and that is all on their shared projects page. So thank you very much to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video and been sponsoring my videos for quite some time. I really appreciate it. So please go check out their website. They really are great. So let's quickly backtrack because you might not know what Bazite is. So if you have followed the channel for a while, you know that I was a big fan of the Steam Deck and I still am. It still is probably my favorite big device to play Steam games. But the reason I don't have it is because this was sent to me by Ioneo and a family member is using the Steam Deck. And the reason I let him use that rather than this, because the Steam Deck is the one that I actually really want to make content about, is it's easier to use. It's a device that I feel safe giving to a non-tech person to play PC games. And that's where Bazite comes in because SteamOS is not available everywhere. I think they did it for the Legion Go recently and there's a few other devices that they're opening SteamOS up to but it's not available for everything. And Bazite came out before SteamOS was available for anything. It was only available on the Steam Deck. And it allows you to put SteamOS, so the operating system for the Steam Deck. If you don't know what the Steam Deck is, you'll have to Google that. I'm not gonna talk about what the Steam Deck is in this video, but it allows you to have the operating system from the Steam Deck on any x86 handheld. x86 meaning a mobile Windows infrastructure. And what I noticed with Bazite is that their website isn't keeping up with the level of development that's happening. So when I went to the website, it said, this particular device is not supported. There's going to be certain issues like sleep mode isn't working and there were a few other things that wouldn't work. I installed it, just went for it. I just said it's an Ioneo device and sleep mode works. We'll talk about it, sleep mode works and uh, the other you know, little features do work. So let's take a look at one of the little things that they've implemented. So um, you do have your, you see now my buttons aren't working. So here, okay, so let's show you the, the first problem. So often I'll wake it from sleep mode, I put it to sleep last night, 
and the sleep mode does work. So I used the battery and I see the battery hasn't died that much since I played last night. But sometimes when I wake it from sleep, the buttons don't work. So now, there we go. Now the buttons are working. So I've just got to put it back to sleep, wake it up, and it starts up again. So you might have little quirks on that. And if, it, if you have a new x86 device, let's say, for instance, you just bought the new MSI Claw, which I don't know, there's no stock of that thing, but some one of the newer devices, you might not have support yet with Bazite. Um, okay, so now with this one, Ionia has got these two function buttons. I've got the my Steam button over there. So that is my main Steam menu. And then on the Steam, we've got the three dot button. Um, this is my three dot button and it sorts this thingy out here. Now, I don't really manage any of this here. If you double press, what, let's uh, press and hold, you get the their little menu system, the Bazite menu system. Now here I can control TDP. Um, I can control the fan. So disabled. Um, a smooth curve for the fan or a fast curve for the fan. I usually put it on smooth. I'm not sure why it's changed. Um, you can control your CPU there. Um, you can set the RGB. So I usually have my RGB off. Um, you can have, so it actually has control over certain things on the device itself. Um, you can change your controller. It actually does interface with the gyro. You can swap your keys for Nintendo style gaming. So if you are finding that your shortcut buttons aren't working, it does have uh, shortcuts that you can create like hotkeys where you press, like here's the Xbox button. So this button plus B will enable some sort of feature in the system. I do have swipe up, swipe down features, which I have never used. I must actually refresh myself on these because that might actually might come in handy. The other thing that I have found a little bit frustrating in this is my Steam keyboard does work. Within the system, I've got my Steam keyboard here and it works fine. But when I'm in desktop mode, if I go into desktop mode, the Linux system, um, the keyboard is not, it doesn't always work. And if it does work, it doesn't scale properly. Very, very seldom have I actually got the on-screen keyboard to work in desktop mode. And that brings me to another point is when you are doing your installation, maybe just choose the KDE version because I chose the GNOME version and I think that's one of the reasons why I'm running into issues. GNOME kind of looks cooler in my opinion, um, but and I just wanted to try it, but uh, I kind of regret it and I, I, I would rock recommend just trying the KDE version. So something I found very interesting, now if you put a keyboard and mouse in this, I haven't really used this as a productivity tool sw since switching to Bazart. When it was Windows, that's one of the benefits of Windows is just it's the same as my laptop and I'm using it as a computer for quite some time. I thought of maybe, maybe making a video about that, but I decided against it. But it is very handy to have Windows for productivity. And since switching to Linux, I admittedly have not used this as a computer at all for you know daily tasks. But one thing that I find interesting, so switching to Linux, the two things that annoy me is a video editor and a photo editor. However, WayDroid is installed on here and it's like, like wine for running Windows systems on Linux, you can install Android apps on the system. I mean, there we go, I've got Android running. Now let's see if I can get the apps open here. Here is my Lightroom. Here are my images. I now have an Android tablet, and so if there is an Android video editor that you really like, maybe you could video edit your videos in here. You know, there are quirks, it sometimes crashes, but um, as far as the Lightroom thing is, it kind of works fine. I was talking in a previous video of how I wouldn't really use this for my overseas trip because it's not a productivity tool anymore. So I would still need to bring my iPad or laptop in case I need to do something for work. And just looking at this again for this video, I realize, you know, I can do my photo editing. There's a lot I can do here in Linux thanks to this WayDroid that has come pre-installed. And then, you know, at like Linux as a desktop, if you aren't doing sort of super professional things, it's not that difficult to run. Like, if you use the Discovery, which is like their app store, most of the things you need, for instance, Edge Browser, which is, I've just kind of converted to Edge Browser since using Windows. It's a pretty good browser, and so I use it on my phone and everywhere so that all my tabs sync and all that. I can put Edge Browser on you. There's certain things that are sort of mainstream that are now available on Linux. It's not the weird, quirky, nerdy thing that it used to be in the past. And then if you wanna go back, you just say, return to the gaming mode. But a very big caveat here is that it supports AMD graphics, 
but NVIDIA is still in beta. Like again, this might be in further development than what the website says and they say publicly. Um, I have seen some guys using NVIDIA things, but it's safer to say from, you know, as an official video that only AMD is fully supported. So if your handheld has NVIDIA graphics, you might struggle using Bazite. So any major pitfalls here, you know, this is specifically talking about my experience with the Ioneo 2S, but you know, a lot of people have had a lot of joy with Bazite, but it is a one size fits all system. You know, it's trying to make SteamOS work on everything. And so your mileage is going to vary from device to, to device, but the gaming experience, specifically for a gaming console, I cannot express how much better Linux is than Windows. And we'll talk about the positives of Windows, but it is a better experience. But you know, one of the big positives is if you had a game, for instance, uh, my Star Wars game works better on Windows. And that's actually one of the reasons I was using this with Windows was to play that Star Wars game. And then I went and put Bazites on. Anyway, it doesn't play as well on here. And sometimes if at all, like, so it doesn't always start up and it's quite a mission to get it start starting thanks to that EA games thing that they use. And then also if you run into an issue, I know there are mods for the, the SteamOS, you know, you've got Decky Loader and there's a lot of little mods that you can use on here, but Windows is kind of like, it's so versatile that it's a problem, you know? And so for instance, this screen is very bright by default and even on its minimum setting, it's still too bright. I could fix that with Windows. I had this thing that would dim the screen overall. I can't find anything like that with Linux. If you're out there and you know of something, <laughs> please let me know. So the major benefits here, and this is uh, probably slightly controversial in terms of the technicalities of what's happening under the hood and the fact that it's a one size fits, fits all system, but you are usually gonna have a more powerful device than a Steam Deck. Most of these x86 handles that come out have got more brute force than a steam deck and so you you tend to one are going to have a more powerful handheld than your steam deck and then you're going to go put bazites on it and it's going to optimize the crap out of it and it's going to be just a beast don't take my technical word for it go speak to someone like carrie about that but my logic tells me that if you're gonna put something like Linux on a device that's more powerful than the Steam Deck, it's just gonna be an absolute beast. And that's been my experience. I can play stuff. I haven't had to tweak TDPs at all. Like I just play games. I've been playing God of War. Um, what other power, like demanding game. I haven't started with Doom Eternal yet. Um, I've been playing a couple of demanding games here and there. Uh, God of War is probably the most demanding so far. And there's just, no issues whatsoever. It just plays the games, like it just plows through them. And that is really cool. And call me a liar, but I'm pretty sure my screen looks better on Bazite than when it's running with Windows. Maybe this will start somebody on a rabbit hole of a project. This is something that I really want to do is build a little PC and put Bazite on it. That is kind of like the ultimate console experience to me. Plug a couple of controllers in, plug it into a TV and run SteamOS on your TV. Bloody hell, that would be cool. So I don't have the resources yet to do that, but that is definitely a project I have for the future. Or if Valve beat me to the punch and happened to release SteamOS for some manufacturer like Lenovo to make a little PC that we can use as a console. So yeah, that is something to look into. Little console with your controllers set up permanently as a gaming system in your home. So should you do this? Yes, <laughs> there are a few important caveats to that. And the one is if there is a Windows game, like I like an idiot just went and installed this, not thinking about my Star Wars game that I still wanted to play and now I can't play it. So if there is a game that you're particularly playing, first play that game, then move over to Bazite or just do a dual boot. It's a little bit more technical, but do a dual boot. Get like, I have this two terabyte thing in here. I could have just done a dual boot instead of being like an idiot and just putting Bazites on it. And I would have had ample space on the Windows side and the Bazite side to do a dual boot. And lastly, in Windows defense, like now that I've been using Bazite for a long time, there's a few, the only real major quirk that frustrates me with this is you know, the sleep mode and not being able to use the buttons. But other than that, this has been a wonderful experience. And that's the only time I go, oh, I wish I had my windows handled because every time I powered it up, um, it was ready to roll. But I do not miss the tweaking with windows. I do not miss the constant fiddling. But that being said, 
Opening up Windows, if the irony pops up, just sort that out, and then open Steam in big picture mode. It was a pretty great experience.